welcome back to another Sophisticated Saturday where together we work through my to-do list and get things done. Today I was starting off in my office. I had a whole bunch of computer work that I wanted to do and actually began the day by doing a little bit of voiceover work like I'm doing right now. I typically voice over a lot of my videos. So if you want a behind the scenes look as to what it looks like, this is exactly what I'm doing right now. After I finished up with some computer work, I had cleaning upstairs, I was in the laundry room. This is where I had a mini fridge that we were using for breast milk storage while I was breastfeeding. I am now done breastfeeding officially. We made it just past the one year mark and I decided to be done at that point. So I'm going to clean out this fridge and I think we're gonna take it down to the basement just so I can have a little bit of extra room in the laundry room, maybe have some space to fold laundry there and just keep it in the storage room. You won't get closer to me. If you want, open your door. If that's what you want, then baby, try to believe me when I say that you can tell me anything. One of the major things on my to-do list today, and honestly most weekends, is to do some meal planning and meal prepping. I wanna show you some more of that process today because I know a lot of you like the meal planning process and like getting an insight into how I do it, as well as seeing some of the things that I not only cook, but prep for the week to help make cooking of meals throughout the week a little bit easier. So what I like to do is I flip through my recipe binder. I have recipes that I've found online. I have recipes that I've found through magazines. I really like having magazine recipes. They oftentimes have really pretty pictures, which I enjoy, but they're fun to get some inspiration. And I just rip out my favorites and stick them into some clear plastic sheet protectors into my binder. I have shared reorganizing my recipe binder not that long ago, so I can link that video if you are interested but I separated out my recipe binders, one for main meals, another one for desserts, one for breakfast, and then one that has appetizers and side dishes and other random things like that. Typically the binder I spend the most amount of time in is the one that has all of the main dishes. That's what I use to inspire my meals. And then sometimes I'll open that binder that has side dishes to help supplement a meal that I find. I'm also going through at the same time, you'll see I have my computer open. I use that sometimes to create a list of meals that I wanna make as well as creating on the notes app so it syncs with my phone. I create a grocery list. Sometimes I will do a pickup order. So you'll see I had Target open on my computer and I was just adding things to my cart and it's really easy to do a pickup order. Other times if I'm going in the store, I will just create that list on my notes app and then that way when I go into the grocery store, I have the same list on my phone. I knew I wanted to make a soup so I was flipping through the soup recipes to see if anything sparked my interest there. I'm also beginning to pull out some recipes. I try and be really intentional with the recipes I put in my binder as to things that I'm for sure going to want to at least try once. But every now and then I stick something in the binder and change my mind and decide to pull it out. So I pulled out a ramen recipe that I originally had in there, was just looking over the ingredients and realized the ingredients are too complicated. And sometimes I wanna make a recipe and it sounds really good and I like the concept of it, but the ingredients are too complicated and I know I'm not gonna go out of my way to go to a bunch of special grocery stores or ordering ingredients online, so it's just not worth it for me to make that dish. So I decided to pull it out and get rid of that recipe and not have it take up so much space in my recipe binder. So you'll see I'm doing exactly what I just described before here. I am looking at the recipe, the ingredients that are in the list. I like to meal plan in my kitchen so that I can write everything out that I need in my grocery list. Sometimes I'll put a little question mark next to an ingredient so I can go double check in my fridge, freezer, or pantry to make sure I have that item. Or I can just quickly get up and pop into one of those areas and see if I already have an ingredient or not or if I need to add it to my grocery list. The last and final step of my meal planning is to write everything out on the menu board. I try and write it in the order in which we are going to make the meals. I don't assign a day of the week to a specific meal 
because I don't know how long a meal is going to last us. We love having leftovers. I love cooking meals that last a while just because it means I have to cook less and we don't mind having leftovers, which is really nice. We typically pack up leftovers from dinner for lunch the next day, but sometimes they'll last us for the following dinner and possibly the next lunch. Usually it's like a maximum of four meals, but sometimes it only lasts us dinner and lunch the next day. So that's why I don't like to assign a day of the week to it. I like to have more of a list and just work through it. And once the list runs out, then I meal plan again and start all over. I wish you were mine. I wish you were mine. Now it's time to get started with the actual meal prep. One thing that I wanted to use up in my refrigerator was I had a bunch of carrots that I bought and part of the reason I bought them was for some of the recipes I was thinking of, but I also wanted to get creative and use them all up. So I know I'm going to use them in a shredded form. So I'm just gonna start by peeling all of the carrots and then getting them into my food processor with the grating disc on top. Easiest way to shred carrots ever. It's sometimes an extra step for me to take out the food processor and of course to wash it, but it is so worth it and how much time it saves for the actual shredding. One thing I knew that I wanted the shredded carrots for was the turkey banh mi bowls. It is one of the easiest recipes I've ever made. I will try and link all of the recipes that I'm prepping ingredients for. So if you are interested in making the full recipes, check the description box below. If I don't link it, it's because I couldn't find it, but I think I should be able to find all of them. I should also mention that the turkey banh mi bowls, the original recipe I found was not for turkey. It was a pork banh mi bowl, but I prefer turkey and don't really eat pork a lot. So if you also don't eat pork or just prefer turkey, it works really well with turkey. After all of the carrots were shredded, I pulled out my Instapot because I wanted to make shredded chicken. I had a few recipes that I needed shredded chicken for. I probably could have made even more chicken, but it might not have lasted as long as I wanted it to. So I wanted shredded chicken for those chicken chimichangas that I was going to make in the air fryer as well as the mandarin chicken salad. And later in the week, I was going to have a chicken caprese soup, which I believe also had shredded chicken in it. I only put four breasts in there, so again, not quite enough for three meals and three meals that I want to last a while. So I think this only lasted me two meals, but making shredded chicken in the Instapot is relatively easy. And nothing's gonna Even though some of these things are really easy to do, doing it over the weekend and prepping in advance just to make the week easier helps me out so much. You'll see as the chicken's cooking, I am making a sriracha mayo that goes with the turkey banh mi bowls. Really easy, it is mayo and sriracha. I'm not even measuring it. I'm pretty sure the recipe has a measurement to it, but I'm just taste testing it. And it is, again, one less thing that I have to do. Chopping veggies is another thing, depending on the vegetable that you can do in advance. The banh mi bowls have jalapenos in them, so I am going to start by seeding the jalapenos. I don't like the seeds because it sometimes makes it just a little bit too spicy for me, and then chopping them up into smaller pieces.
also start prepping for that mandarin chicken salad. I have red cabbage. I'm just going to slice that up pretty thinly here. Cabbage is pretty hearty, so slicing it in advance, there is no issue with that. And I'm actually going to save the Ziploc that I had the full cabbage in and just put all of the slices back in there. We cross over borders to get where we are And it's all for you, it's all for you the turkey banh mi bowls have a marinade that goes with them. I'm even making this in advance. It's a very, very simple marinade. And I know I sound like a broken record, but all of these little things while I'm just in the kitchen and can take care of all of it at once, as opposed to just a little bit each day, helps expedite the process. I have my cutting board that I've already dirtied and it's just less dishes, less thinking, and is probably one of the reasons that I'm able to have home cooked meals every day. Next up is the salad dressing for the mandarin chicken salad, which is another thing that we'll do just fine in the fridge for quite a few days. It's really about picking and choosing what things you wanna prep in advance versus what things really need to be done that evening or in the moment for whatever meal you're cooking. Making sauces, dressings, marinades, chopping things, or prepping individual ingredients are all typically things you can do in advance. It's all for you. It's all for you. My chicken is now done. I'm pulling it out of the Instant Pot, easily shredding it here with two forks. If you make a very large batch in advance, I know a lot of people like using a mixer for a quick shred, but to me, it's usually not worth the mess of dirtying a large mixing bowl. And it just takes me a little bit of time with two forks. Again, if I were to have a bunch of chicken breasts, that would be different. And I would take out my stand mixer and mix it up that way. I did it all for you. It's all for you, it's all for you, it's all for you. That's pretty much all I'm going to do for ingredient prepping for dinners over the week. I had a bunch of extra shredded carrots and I'm going to use them to make carrot muffins for Owen. We ended up eating some of these ourselves as well. They're delicious for babies, toddlers, or adults. I did reduce the amount of sweetener that the recipe called for just a little bit because I wanted it to be more for Owen. You'll see I also added some applesauce packets in there. We didn't have any regular applesauce. That would be just a little bit cheaper and more economical to get a jar of applesauce or even make your own if you have time. But because we have these little squeezable packets, I just added Added those in as well as some mashed banana that helps with the sweetness and natural sweetness too. The only one for me. It's hard to sleep at night. I lie here waiting for.
It's always surprising to me how quick and easy it is to make muffins. So if you're looking for a good morning treat or something to prep in advance, muffins are a really great way to go. They're also a good way to use up some extra ingredients that you have. Oftentimes you can find different types of muffins that include different fruits and veggies that you might already have. So sometimes I will Google the fruit or veggie followed by the word muffin and try out new and different recipes. After that marathon of cooking, it's time to do a little bit more cleaning around the house, check those things off of my to-do list. I had vacuuming that I wanted to do of bedrooms. So that means Owen's bedroom as well as our bedroom. We're spending a lot more time in Owen's bedroom and letting him play there in the mornings before the nanny gets to, before the nanny gets to the house as well as in the evening times before bed. Our bedroom needed a little bit of a vacuum and nothing feels as good as seeing vacuum lines. When I walk into my room at night, it just makes it feel so much cleaner with that one little extra step and it truly doesn't take that long. magic You belong with the Another thing on my to-do list, if you know me, my nails are always painted and today my nails were not painted. So I wanted to take the time to give myself a little bit of a manicure and I oftentimes get questions about how I do my nails and I alternate in the way that I do it. Sometimes I do regular polish, other times I do a gel manicure at home. Very, very rarely do I go get my nails done, but I do like getting pedicures and haven't even gotten a pedicure in quite a while. I think the last one I got was in March. So we're closing in on a year since I've gotten a pedicure as well. It saves a lot of money doing my nails at home and I think I've gotten the process down. So I don't mind doing it at home, especially with this at home gel kit. The manicures last a whole lot longer. So I'm not doing them as often as I have to with regular polish. I also have a lot of nail polish and I have a lot because I do it at home and I like to have different color options. But I'm just showing you here some of the steps that I take. I put on these little UV protective gloves. I get a little bit weary about putting my hands under UV light too frequently, so I do think it helps sometimes. There's no big And I was getting a little bit bored of some of the gel colors that I have. So I tried to get kind of creative and I was using this really, really dark purple. It might almost even be black nail polish and putting some silver sparkles on top of it just for fun. Not totally my style, but I did end up liking the way that it looked. Finally, I'm doing a little bit of picking up in the bathroom and that's probably all I'm gonna do for today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, spending another sophisticated Saturday with me. If you did, Make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and until next time, I will see you guys later.